All right, so here we are, Bob, after almost two years working together. Yeah. And the project started, you know, pretty serious about us wanting to recreate the craft perfectly. That was the initial project. And you were uh, very kind to say yes to work with us. You saw how serious we were in wanting to make it exactly as yeah, you Yeah, it, it was impressive what you had planned. Yeah. And it evolved and we really built a lot we really did a lot more than we originally thought we were going to do it all started off with a model and then it grew into this three-dimensional environment and now it turned into this real truly realistic environment mm -hmm. and spending all this time together getting it all right and at a certain point i said to myself we're going to be taking people back in time to 1988 and 1989 this is exactly right, to what, see s4 to like see s4 yeah. yeah they're gonna they're gonna actually experience the place exactly as you described it to us and we built it exactly to the specifications you gave us to the colors and sizes and right. and the tools that were in there and all that and it was so serious for a long time. It was so it, we took it so seriously to make it so it was, accurate. It was. It was. A, it was a lot of work, a lot of corrections, and a lot of time. Yeah, and we are. We were so grateful that you were so helpful to work with us. You were always there. I mean, we had. We must have had like numerous Zoom calls together and going over details. And there's there's so much that we covered. And there came a moment where. We were thinking, how do we, how are we going to launch this? It's a serious thing, you know. It's we want to, we don't want to come across as this is a cheesy project or anything. We want to make it look really cool and realistic and serious. And, but on the same token, we wanted to bring something a little bit lighthearted to mm -hmm. the whole story. And I was kind of uh, working on ideas for how we were going to launch a trailer for this. And I thought we got to bring people back in time and. Why, why don't we use a time machine? And I thought that was somewhat a little bit ridiculous in my head when I said that, because I said, how am I going to do that? And then I got to find out that there's a company out here in the States that rents the uh, DeLorean time machines from Back to the Future. Mm -hmm. And I found out about them and I thought, oh, that's really cool. So I decided to reach out and just find out. I, I wasn't even really sure we were going to do that, but I thought, I wonder what, how much that's going to cost and if, you know, this can happen. And it, I ended up speaking to the owner of the company, I'm not going to mention his name because I can't. And I told him, I said, well, this is kind of an odd project we're doing. We're working with a guy that is quite, you know, is quite known out there in the public. And he's a guy that worked out at Area 51 back in the 80s. And he was apparently reverse engineering alien spacecraft and so the guy goes are you kidding me he goes are you talking about bob lazar hmm. i said oh so you know about him he goes well he says not only do i know about him he goes i'm an aerospace engineer and i actually worked at groom lake on a few secret the space what are the chances yeah right? on a few crafts and i was like what so i immediately called him on a him few crafts on a few not not the spacecraft so, so sorry oh, these yeah. were these were, uh, I think he gave aircrafts. me the names, aircrafts, yeah, human-made aircrafts, absolutely, yeah. But they were secret at the time, mm -hmm. and uh, I immediately was like, what? Are you kidding? How, what, what are the chances mm -hmm. of this being, you know, a real thing? So I, I reached out to him, and I said, are, are you for real? Like, you really worked out there? And he says, yeah. He goes, I don't advertise it because I shouldn't. You know, the Department of Defense doesn't want me to go out and say I did that. But I did. And he says, but I also rent DeLorean time machines. And I thought, well, maybe this is a sign. <laughs> so <laughs> I thought, I wonder if this is going to be well received with the public. You know, we want to bring the whole world back to the most accurate representation of S4 as you experienced it. And it was so serious, this, the work we did for so long, we, we, we kind of wanted to just come up with something cool. And so I gave you a call and I said, Bob, I have an idea and I want to get your opinion on it. And I said to you, I said, well, I found the guy who has the DeLorean time machine from Back to the Future. He has it in Las Vegas. He, we would be able to bring it out to the 
to a dry lake bed near Area 51 or out in Nevada, would you be interested in coming out and filming with us on a dry lake bed? And <laughs> we make you drive the car and we'll bring people just go at 88 miles an hour and we'll go back to 1988. And you just and I said, and you would and you finished the sentence yeah. by saying, <laughs> right. yeah. you know, I'm Bob Lazar and this and now I'm going to take you back to 1988. And I said, yeah. oh, this is cool. Yeah, it, I remember the phone call. But yeah, I, that, I mean, that sounded like fun. It did. And, you know, it's just like you said, is it's a serious topic, but, you know, it's a fun way to introduce it. Just I got to take you back in time here. And it was it was a good time. It was such it was a, a good blast. time. Yeah. yeah, we got to meet so many great people while we did that. Mm -hmm. The guy that's got the car, uh, the couple of guys that had the car. We got to bring up friends out there. We we yeah we, for a you know, someone from the 80s that watched all the Back to the Future, it's uh, it's fun driving the car. Yeah, <laughs> it really, <laughs> it was such a blast. And we were not even supposed to be able to drive it. When oh, really? the deal was, we, we were, really hauled ass in the yeah, car. Yeah. Was, yeah, it was, I remember the deal was we get the car out on the dry lake bed and we could take pictures, we could film you getting into the car and you know starting it up, but we were not supposed to drive the car. And I think the guy himself, when he was out there, he got so excited that Bob Lazar was in the time machine that he was like, you could go ahead, you know, you could just, yeah, just don't ruin the car, you know, because it, it was full <laughs> of dirt and it was destroyed by the time we were done with it. <laughs> It was so dusty. We, I think we oh, yeah. dusted that car like 30 times. Yeah, but still on the inside, the door jams. I mean, it's a dry lake bed. It's, it was just <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but it was such a unique experience yeah, to do that. Great. And that we took, We I called you and I said, would you mind bringing your original MJ-12 license oh, plate? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. We put it on the car. Yeah. Yeah. That's the that's the one you had on your Corvette back then. Yeah. yeah. That's it, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So we took that license plate, put it on the back. Of, they had the out of time yeah. license plate and we just put the MJ12 right on top mm -hmm. of it. And how cool was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good time. It was great.